Say amen. 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 It's so great to have the choir and bell choir with us today. It's awesome. Our final scripture reading for today comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 126. It can be found on page 541 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Let us listen for God's word. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The grass withers and the flower fades. The word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Well, in high school and college, when the sports teams I played on traveled to an away game, we had a number of songs that we would listen to and sing to get us psyched up. Now, being a goalkeeper in field hockey, one of my go-to songs was Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat Benatar. <laughs> now, these songs had a purpose, even if they weren't deep and meaningful. They accompanied us in our common life together. And I'm, I'm wondering what would be on your playlist now as you go through your daily life. What songs would accompany you on your life's journey? Psalm 126 was one of the songs that accompanied pilgrims going up to Jerusalem. It was on their playlist, if you will. It is the seventh of 15 songs of ascents in the book of Psalms. They are songs that were meant to accompany pilgrims as they made their way to the holiest of places, Jerusalem. And as you might notice, one always goes up to Jerusalem, thus songs of ascents. Psalm 126 is a song of remembrance and hope. The pilgrims are remembering the time in the not too distant past when they were captives of the Babylonians. And when the Lord restored their fortunes, when the people returned to their home, they were indeed like those who dream. I imagine that they could hardly believe that they were back in Israel, back in the land that God had given to them. And I imagine that they may have gone around saying to one another, pinch me, I must be dreaming. And so the first verses of this psalm are about remembering how God restored them as a people. They are about laughter and joy. They are about how great God is that even the other nations proclaim that the Lord has done great things for them. Did you catch that? The nations say, the Lord has done great things for them, and then the people reply, the Lord has done great things for us, right? These first half verses, these verses of remembering, they end with the people affirming just that. The Lord has done great things for them, and we, we rejoice, they say. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Psalm 126 is about remembering a time that seemed like a dream because of how God's goodness showered over us. It is a psalm about remembering how God has provided not just for the Israelites, but for us in the past. How God has indeed done great things for us. Now the remembering of the first half of the psalm is really in service to the second half. The reason for remembering is so that the people will have hope that God will bring them into a future that has been at least as good as the past, that made them feel like they were dreaming. And so the pilgrim song 
continues. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, they shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Everything about these verses are about hope in the future. The fact that they are about planting and reaping a good harvest, a harvest of joy, it's about the future, right? They will, they will once again be like those who dream. The dream will continue, right? Psalm 126 is about having hope in a future where God will act to restore us as a people just as God has done in the past. This song of ascent is about trusting in the goodness of God for our coming days because we have already experienced that goodness in the past. <clears throat> Professor James Lindbergh writes about where we find ourselves in this passage of remembrance and hope for the future. And this is what he has to say. He writes, few passages in the Bible indicate more clearly that in the biblical view, our lives are played out in the space between recalling what God has done for us in the past and hoping that God will grant our prayers for the future. To put it another way, he says, we could find our own location between verses three and four of this psalm. We recall and hear told why the Lord did for our people in the past, and now we pray for the Lord's continued help in the future, hoping for the time that we too shall come home with shouts of joy he continues, some things of the past should be forgiven, for example, our trespasses, and then forgotten. Others, such as the great things the Lord has done for us, should be remembered, even celebrated. Remembering what God has done can help shape our prayers and hopes concerning what God may yet do. So I would like to submit this morning to all of us here that indeed we are people whose lives are played out in the space between verses 3 and 4, between recalling what God has done for us in the past and hoping that God will continue to be good to us in the future. And the present, the present is that space, isn't it? That space between verses 3 and 4 of this psalm. And we, like those ancient Israelites, are like those who dream because we remember what God has done for us. And we hope and pray that the dream will continue into the future. But for now, we're living in between those two dreams. A very talented minister and musician, Richard Bruxfort Culligan, writes songs based on the Psalms. And for Psalm 126, he wrote a song entitled, When We Share God's Dream. When we share God's dream, we know there will be laughing, there will be singing. When we share God's dream, we know there will be justice, there will be kindness when we share God's dream. On this Stewardship Sunday, as we stand in that between place in the psalm where we are in the place where we get to share God's dream, that is the place we are in, the place where we get to share God's dream. We take time to reflect and remember how giving our time and talent and money to this church has been like participating, like sharing in God's dream. It's important to recall all that God has done for us with this, within this past year, right? All the ways that we have participated in bringing joy and laughter, all the ways we shared God's dream this past year. So can we, we take some time now together to name how we as a congregation have shared God's dream of joy and laughter, justice and kindness. So how have we been like those who dream for one another and our community and our world? And I'm looking for responses from you. How have we done that? Shirley, our little pantry that we built, thanks to the youth and a lot of help from Dennis and Carl. What else? Is that the only thing? Yes, Mary Jo? Haiti, went to Haiti again, had a mission trip to Haiti. I heard something back here. Did I? Emmaus. Emmaus, I heard it over here. Your voice traveled apparently back there, Sandy. Emmaus, right. What else? Yep, Pat. Prayer shawl ministry, right? Our chicks with sticks, right. What else? Yes, Brooke. The youth mission trip, that's right. What else? 
Deacon cards. Deacon cards, the prayer cards we send to deacons. Roberta. With the generosity of the congregation, we were able to provide wedding blankets for our domestic violence, wedding blankets for NCSA, wedding blankets for me. That's right, so a blanket, that's 60 blankets because of the generosity of this congregation that help people in need. What else? <laughs> Bob for Bob Kling, yeah. And the restoration of our church that is still ongoing. We give thanks for Bob a lot around here. Yep. I got Mr. Yes. Rich. Um, Tom. Right, there's a whole crew. That's good news. <laughs> That's right. We are grateful for that. How else have we participated in God's dream? Thank you all. Yes, somebody had their hand up, I think. Operation, Operation Christmas Child, we just did that the other week, right? Packed 100 boxes. Roberta. That's right, the 20 blankets that the, the youth made at their little, their musky missions, their stay at home mission trip. What else? Anything else? Of the, uh, crop walk. Crop walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's just what we could think of right now, on the spot. You didn't go home and look at your calendars. That, that doesn't count the countless phone calls and cards and letters that people do individually to care for one another. It doesn't include the teachers. We didn't talk about Sunday school and youth group, all those things that happen the way that people come together to help lead worship, whether it's through music or through spoken word, all those things we have done this year. And the other thing we did, the parade, what about the parade, right? The 4th of July parade, that was great fun. That, that I think made a lot of people happy. It was outreach to our community. It was all good things, okay? So, now that we've remembered all the good things God has done for us in 2018 and done with us, let's take some time to name the hopes that we have for next year here at First Presbyterian Church, right? Because we're making our pledges of our time and talent and financial resources. You know, we know that we can accomplish far more together than any one of us can do alone, right? I think that is that's one of the, the many miraculous things that happen around here, right? Being part of a community of faith like First Presbyterian Church, it makes it possible for my contributions of time, talent, and, and money to do far more than if I contributed on my own. So together we're able to share God's dream in ways that really impact people's lives. So let's, let's ponder anew, as the hymn says, what the Almighty can do and will do, we hope, in 2019. What are your hopes for our future next year? What are your prayers as we enter into another year that we get to share God's dream? Shirley. Oh boy, I know that's not just yours. I know that's right. I think they've been trying to find the leak and they haven't been able to. Maybe the hope is to find the leak and then fix it, yep. Make, make, all, make the building all done, right? Okay. Yes, Brooke. So you said going on the youth mission trip to Pittsburgh, right? All right. Awesome. What else? Provide an opportunity for another pastoral resident. Aha, another pastoral resident, yes. Yep. Behind, it's right behind me, yes. More people to share here in God's Word. Okay. Increase our numbers so that we might share together this good news that we have found. What else? Anything else? More participation in our music programs. There you go. More participation in the music programs. Wednesday night, not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, be here. 4.30 and then 7.30, right? Okay. Yes, Roberta. I'm sorry? Continuing our prayer list. Yes, that's a powerful ministry that we share in. 
Anything else? Any other thoughts? Will they go with us, whether they've been spoken or unspoken? These hopes, these prayers go with us into the next year. Listen to this Psalm of Ascents again, this time by the late Eugene Peterson. It seemed like a dream too good to be true when God returned Zion's exiles. We laughed, we sang, we couldn't believe our good fortune. We were the talk of the nations. God was wonderful to them. God was wonderful to us. We are one happy people. I think that describes our congregation pretty well. And he goes on, and now, God, do it again. Maybe this is our prayer. God, do it again. Bring rains to our drought-stricken lives. Show those who planted their crops in despair so those who planted crops of despair will shout hurrahs at the harvest. So those who went off with heavy hearts will come home laughing with armloads of blessing. Friends, as we journey into the next year, may we let this song accompany us as we seek to share God's dream. Let's add it to our playlist. I would even say our pray list. Let us be a people who remember God's faithfulness to us. Let us be a people whose lives are touched and who live into the hope of God's promises to us. Let us be like those who dream. Amen.